Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. As for me, I'm in Mexico right now, probably taking a little siesta or something like that. That's right, I told you guys yesterday that myself and Laura actually went on a little trip to Mexico just to decompress for a couple days. One more trip down memory lane to Nerd and I'll be back tomorrow here having a great time. But I tell you what, it's been an amazing adventure building this place out. I just really needed a break before we open up on the 13th, guys. So I had some amazing footage over at Nerd that I just, I, I've been sitting on. I thought, what a great way to share it with you and get a little bit of rest so we don't skip a vlog. We actually looked at some crazy boas. I mean, you know, Kevin has such an eclectic collection. He has all kinds of different stuff. So let's jump into some boas that are unbelievable. Kevin has some amazing boas as well. This is actually a VPI Sun Glow Blood jungle boa. Basically what there is a VPI albino that makes the sun glow because it's also hypo. Then the blood is another recessive mutation. On top of it, you've got the jungle, which is a pattern mutation. Kevin, this thing is ridiculous. Now, what don't they call these like dragon something or isn't there something like that? Uh, so you're talking about that. Those are the albino versions of uh, yeah, albino blood. Yes. Yeah, sun there's, yeah, there's one, uh, I think there's a distinction between the sharp line and the yeah. call line. Like one's a dragon and one's a something else. Yeah. Regardless, that's I so this is the VPI though. This, yes, yeah, this that's the VPI. VPI. So yeah. VPI would be a T positive T type positive. of albino. So it's like a hypo. Yeah, exactly. It, but it's it's not like hypo like our normal salmon boas or something right. like that. It's this very uh, soft looking yeah. animal, and it does some pretty remarkable stuff. Yeah, no VPI is uh, T positive stuff is ridiculous. I and can show you another. Blood. So if we take VPI, which is a T positive, and this is a Sun Glow Jungle. Oh, a sun glow jungle. So, okay. So, there's no anery in this. Yeah, there is. Oh, there's anery. Yeah. Okay, guys. So I was going to say, that looks like an anery. That like is a ridiculous. snow glow or. Oh, so, it's a snow, VPI snow glow jungle. You know, it's, it's funny. I don't really think about things. I'm like, oh, what yeah. is this? VPI yeah. snow glow jungle. So, yeah. So, this would have hypo and jungle and VPI and anatheristic. Wow, that is. Gorgeous, dude. Wow. So yeah, I can compare the two. And of course, this has the anury in it, and this one doesn't have the anury in it. So it's just, there's a lot of contrast, and that one has blood. Yeah, that has and, the blood but, in yeah, it. Yeah, there's just, a, it's pretty remarkable what you can actually do with a lot of these bows. Yeah, crazy. Again, some crazy boas over at Kevin's place. You know, a lot of people don't think of Kevin, myself included, as a boa guy, but uh, he has some crazy stuff. And when you get into such complicated genetics, like he's working not just with the boas, but ball pythons and stuff like that, honestly, sometimes it's even hard to remember what their names are. Right, we'll just, yeah, we're just, all right. That is so actually, you gotta take a photo of the okay. snake. You gotta take this a photo is, of This is all right. pathetic. This is terribly pathetic. All right, wait, hang on. Here, you gotta get a little The round, the round robin. Okay. Hi, Ryan. Hi, I, I, I subscribe to your channel. Wow, it's so wonderful. <laughs> All right, so these are princess diamonds, but they... One's an emperor diamond, so the male would be an emperor diamond, and the female would be called a princess diamond. But uh, these are, yeah. this is clear leucism in boas. These come from the Central American line, okay, so they're so these smaller. Are smaller. Yeah, and they still, sometimes you can see some of them have the freckles uh, on Yeah, them. the T positive, because oh, they also have Central it. American T positive blood in there. Yeah. So as these guys grow, we're gonna start getting some of this paradox stuff. Kind of a little bit leaning on that uh, cow. Yeah, a little bit cow-like, exactly. Yeah. Not quite as much blotching, but still unbelievable. As a matter of fact, Lori said that uh, I can buy one of these. She actually said that. She told she me. Lying? I don't know. She's dead. She did say that. It's she on video, it's and on I video. actually do yep. have it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, screw that uh, pie retic. You need to get one of these instead. Okay. You, I would be honored. I heard it. It's on the vlog. Right. Right. You guys heard it? My right. daughter even heard it. This be at the Reptarium. <laughs> You guys heard it, Jeremy heard it, Kevin heard it, Jay heard it. That's right, Lori said I could get a princess diamond. It's interesting because of course, Perdita is a cow retic that has this beautiful patterning. And the princess diamond, those white boas, actually sometimes have these freckling. But the reason Lori likes them better is that they stay smaller, right? You know you're gonna have an animal that's six, seven foot, maybe eight foot at the max. Whereas, you know, a retic is gonna get 14 plus foot. So Lori wants the smaller animals. So hey, maybe uh, here coming up pretty soon, I'll be able to add a princess this diamond and again you guys heard it so you can back me up so this is an aneurysmic img and uh, the img stuff dude holy moly what does img stand for increasing melanin gene excellent ah uh, look at i passed the test today the melanin obviously is that black pigment and uh these guys when they're born they're not quite as dark as they get older they get more increasing melanin turning them black like this i mean this is probably like 
one of the most sought after boa projects. Right? Yeah, they're, they're great because whenever you have a black snake, like a black golden child or whatever, you get this iridescence. And so when you get a little bit of sunlight, sadly they don't have any sunlight right now, but it's yeah, I got the that rainbow. blue sheen yeah. you'd see on a bull and python. As these get older, they're just gonna get blacker and blacker. And so by the time they're six foot or so, they're just like freaking amazing. I tell you, IMG boas is something that I hope I have in my future because they are ridiculous. Dude, these are the cutest things in the world, dude. <laughs> what the heck? It's one of my favorite things that we breed here. And you've been breeding these for a while. Yeah. That's it's, crazy. I, I raised my adults. I have, they're 20 something years old. Really? So I raised those and they're wild stock and I, I did kind of my socialization because mm -hmm. we're going to get to go pick up this big gnarly toothy thing. But my little babies, so I socialize these and it sticks. So I can show you, you guys are ridiculous. They're like, no, we're not coming out, hey guys. But, uh, but they're not yelping. Yeah, when they're... you think of Cayman, so, you think of, uh, so, so you, how long you been taming Cayman? Uh, since my first ones that I had from the, from the <laughs> wild, because they're normally super like, Bitey and crazy, yeah. and I don't want to get there by an adult cane. No, gosh, those teeth are ridiculous. But uh, even these guys, I mean, it's crazy how chill they are. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. So, uh, and they they are literally one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at all these little monkeys. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at how cute. You just keep them all. You ever sell them? I want to. Yeah, we, we sell them. It's uh. So this is an animal that comes with like a, a higher higher price tag because I really want to keep them. Yes. So uh, this they're up to like fifteen hundred dollars, but I sell I, like every single one will be sold. And they're because they end up framed. Uh, right, excuse me. They, they end up being tamed. tamed. Yeah. They, yeah. So you can raise this up. It's not biting you. It's comfortable with you. They'll sit in your lap. It's like kind of crazy. Here we are so on one of my adult dwarf came in. <laughs> that we, we breed here. But look how well behaved. Not gaping. It is crazy, and again, when you see these teeth in caiman, the dwarf caiman are known for being pretty crazy. And this is, it's like a puppy dog. Yeah. How, and you've had this since it was a baby, or? Yeah, I saw it for 20 something years, so this is all socialization. This is a great example of me working with the brain of this animal, and just having this wonderful, magnificent captive animal. That That's what is, it's all about. That is crazy. I mean, again, if anyone has ever doubted Kevin's ability to get, like you said, in the brain of an animal and actually habituate it, this is proof that it's un, it's crazy to me. I've never seen anything like it. That is amazing. Good. You guys know that I've been working with Salt to keep her super tame. Now, alligators are known for being a little bit tamer, or easier to tame, quite frankly. So to be messing with a tame, Cayman or uh, a Taman Cayman, uh, they are pretty unusual. It was one of the craziest things because those things are known to be pretty ferocious. And even handling that one with Kevin saying like, hey, listen, uh, this thing is awesome. I was like, this thing's gonna rip my head off. So uh, it's pretty awesome. And uh, hey, listen, I thought it was a pretty good dad joke too. What's this dude? So this is a Highland scrub python. Oh my gosh. Not something you see you very often. Uh, you well, went down and checked out Stephen Verita, Steve Kush yeah, down in yeah, Florida. Yeah. And yeah, he works with a lot of scrubs. So me and him go back and forth talk about scrub pythons. And, whew, things it's crazy. crazy. It's awesome. Cool. This was one of my dream snakes, dude. Le dead serious. Like when I was a kid, I used this to- This is a very rare before. snake. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, when we when I was a kid, I remember seeing uh, in the the uh, Living Snakes of the World, I think it was called. Oh my God, the, the Bible! Yes, yes, it was yes. our Bible. I mean, because you know, obviously, Doomerals were awesome and stuff like that. But but to see something like this, man, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So dude. this is different than a Doomerals boa for some people you pretty understand. Um, what's very interesting about something like this is. There is no importation of any of these boas, being Sanzinia, Dumeril boas, Madagascar ground boas, which is what, what this is. You can't get them. So all the stock that we have here in the country from long ago is all we get to work with. Yep. And uh, there's such a plight what's going on in the ecosystem of Madagascar. These animals are just being lost uh, so rapidly. And do you realize that there's less than 1% of 1% percent of their original forest and they're Jeez. just like almost it, 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 I can't even comprehend things yeah like it's that. gone it's just gone and all those animals and but yeah these guys my understanding is is that like these these were more common in Madagascar than Dumeril's boas but yet 
they didn't get exported, so they're super uncommon here, right? I mean, this is like maybe the fourth Malagasy ground boa I've seen in my entire life in person. I have two breeding pairs. Oh my god! And they have some of the biggest babies. They don't Shoot have babies. They don't have many, yeah, exactly. but they have yeah. huge babies. One of them had only one. Oh my god! It had like one subadult. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. They're born like three times the size of a Dumeril's boa. It's, but oh my gosh, that and that color on that, dude. You know that is. Crazy cool, man. Uh, yeah, this is that book right here, The Living Snakes of the World by John Mertens. Uh, I think I might have read this a few times. If you notice, it's a little bit beat up. And of course, these are Dumeril's boas. They also had the Malagasy ground boas in this book. Now, they're very similar. This is an Acrantophorus dumerilli. The Malagasy's are Acrantophorus Madagascarian ensis. You don't see very many Malagasy ground boas. Dumeril's are pretty rare too, but they're not as rare as the Malagasy. So it was an unbelievable pleasure to mess with that. I tell you, I've only seen a couple in my entire life, so hopefully one day Kevin can produce and I can get some babies. Green face Sanzinia tree boa. So this that is once a again big one. Dude. Yeah, she's she's my big Look at girl. That head man. So the male is a mandarin face. Yep. And he's just down hiding in the water. These are a little tricky to breed. Yeah, I've heard. You yeah. really kind of got to get them touch her body. You can. Oh, she's I got, cool. I got she's her temperature cool. down, and uh, she's actually full of follicles right yeah, now. Yeah, you can see she's starting to descend a little bit. So. Wow, red Hold babies, it. they come out just beautiful red. Oh my God, it's my pleasure. Look at the Again. face, you wanna get definitely some some B-roll of that thing's face. Wow, this is incredible, man. I pull it right up and over, here you go, baby. Wow, what a snake, man. Look at that. It looks like a viper, doesn't it? It does, dude. It looks like real. a venomous snake. I mean, almost uh, you know, similar to like a Ming Shang viper or something yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. you know? It's not quite as tricked out as yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> quite as tricked out. God. But I mean, it's like so a, it's a, a structure. structure. The structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, the face there, they're basically, they're very, very sweet. So I, I'm obsessed with uh, tree boas and pythons. Yeah. Um, the one reason why I like, I love obviously green tree pythons and, and whatnot, but I love the tree boas because the babies are larger. Yep. They're a bit easier to work with as far as getting the feed because yep. I've, I've, you know, yeah, man, green the, trees the green are tree pythons can just be about, yeah. they, they, a serious they'll break struggle. You, yeah, they'll break your heart. They'll break your heart, yeah. for sure. Of course, this is one of my little emerald tree boas. These guys are octogenic where they go from red and actually turn green. Well, interestingly enough, Sanzinia, the Madagascan tree boas are the same thing. They're born with this reddish color and then turn this interesting greenish color. Sanzinia are definitely not a common animal at all. So it's really cool to see some and it's awesome that Kevin has added them to his collection. And again, guys, thank you for allowing me to take a little break. I hope I am enjoying Mexico, but I can't wait to get back here. I know that sounds weird. I'm here now, but I can't wait to get back there, get the animals in, get opened up on the 13th. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I'm going to be so full of energy after a couple days of relaxing. Might have one Mexican adventure video coming tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm going to shoot it yet, uh, but I have a pretty good idea of what I might do. Uh, just tune in for that. Thank you guys for watching. You mean the world to me. I appreciate everything that you do for me. Do you know I started a podcast it's called Checking In? You can subscribe to it right over here. You can roll through an entire playlist of vlogs on this side if you so choose. Subscribe to the vlog channel over here turn those post notifications on for daily videos have a wonderful day remember to be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you guys tomorrow